Here, um, I'm going to be uh, talking about the work that I've uh, done in the Rothfels lab over the last year, uh, exactly one year, um, well, in, in two days maybe, it'll be one year that I've been there uh, working on this lovely group of Western North American ferns. So uh, this is a, a biosystematic study of pentagramma, and I say that because I'm making a conscious effort to integrate as many uh, diverse uh, data sources as possible and really looking at the different aspects of this plant. Um, so for me, I always start with chromosome number uh, and genome size to understand the distribution of these across space and across the taxa. Um, looking and tying that into the morphology of the plants in the field and interbarium specimens. Um, a lot of interesting and probably uh, systematically important and informative uh, biochemical characters. So these are some of those chylanthoid ferns that produce farina or a bioflavonoid rich um, powdery substance uh, on mostly on the underside of the leaves, on the adaxial, but in some of the uh, species on the adaxial surface as well. Um, putting all of this uh, in a phylogenetic framework and then tying that into the biogeography and ecology of the sporophytes and the gametophytes uh, moving forward. So uh, today I'm just uh, addressing two questions, um, and that's uh, looking at the distribution of the polyploids across space, uh, and, and specifically, are they widespread or are they restricted to these, these contact zones of the different uh, diploids? Um, and then second, um, and this tie, ties into to Hannah's talk a little bit, um, is asking, can spore diameter be reliably used as a proxy for genome size and hence ploidy level uh, in pentagramma? Right, we have some evidence um, that, that this is a good proxy, in some taxa at least. Um, Dave Barrington's uh, uh, work, work showed that in um, 1986. Uh, and um, we, we know that it's not a reliable proxy in other taxa. So um, I, I want to get at this for pentagramma. Uh, so this is a, a map. Um, it, it's a rough map based on, on what we know now or we, what we think we know. Um, the six diploid species, uh, as, as described by Schuphelz and um, Pryor and Wyndham. And uh, you can see that Pentagramma triangularis has a really broad distribution from Baja in the north uh, down, uh, sorry, from uh, BC in the north down to Baja in the south. And then we have these disjunct uh, Idaho um, triangularis and uh, uh, Maxonii in Arizona here. Um, and, and by the way, we just spent three wonderful days in the field collecting ferns, uh, so we found uh, Maxillonii in a few different ranges in, in Arizona in the last three days. That was great. Um, so you can see the overlap here in the peninsular ranges in, in San Diego County uh, down into Baja. So five of those six diploids at, uh, potentially could occur in that region. That's where I focused most of my sampling effort. Uh, what's less well known and understood is where the polyploids and hybrids are uh, uh, distributed geographically. So um, this is just one individual from, from uh, these three images are all from one individual in, um, collected in San Diego County. Uh, and it's, a, it's got characteristics that suggest that, that it's an allopolyploid, it's, it's a tetraploid, but I um, have not done any sequence data on that yet. Uh, but I'm, I'm wondering whether these polyploids, these allopolyploids and hybrids are going to uh, uh, occur mostly in that contact zone, or are, are we going to find them outside of that contact zone? So far there are um, diploid, uh, triploid, and tetraploid counts, and then Schuphelz et al., Eric and, and um, Mike and Kathleen, uh, suggested that there may be some hexaploids hiding within uh, within the, the pentagramma genus um, that are not yet counted, but um, very large spores, uh, um, multiple alleles, suggesting that, that maybe there's some hexaploids. Uh, but we, we know little, very little about the distribution of polyploids across space because there's few chromosome counts outside of California. Uh, this is from uh, uh, Eric's work, the uh, phylogeny. Uh, this is the, just the, the gap CP short copy. Um, those, uh, these are the diploids here, um, and then these are all uh, tetraploids out here. The black are the allo tetraploids, and the white are the auto uh, uh, tetraploids or triploids. And um, they uh, confirmed early reports of, of hybrids, so both homoploid and um, allopolyploid. 
they found that five of the six species form allopolyploid, so everybody but Pallida, that Sierra Nevada one, um, and then three species uh, they found form uh, autopolyploids. So um, I did some uh, more meiotic chromosome counts. Uh, collaborators in Portugal have done flow cytometry of fresh and silica dried and some herbarium specimens. Uh, then we've added to uh, Eric's uh, spore diameter measurements and um, overlapped the sampling of individuals as much as possible with, with Eric's collection. So I, I was able to get some of his silica material, uh, get flow cytometry genome size estimates from those samples um, to tie that into his molecular data and spore size data. <coughs> so uh, this is this shows the sampling. So these are these colors show the the, the different taxa. So the different colored um, circles are all the diploid species, and then all of these stars in the in the south here, those are all either hybrids that we that we know um, from molecular data, or or we're suspecting they're hybrids based on morphological intermediacy. Um, so this is 170 total map specimens, about 150 new. So uh, tw 20 of those were from 21 of those were from herbarium cytological cultures. Uh, interestingly, we found. Uh, I say only about a 5% uh, <laughs> genome size increase in the silica dried over the fresh material. But this was reassuring that we could still use these dried specimens as a, um, uh, a genome size uh, estimate or inference. Uh, zooming in on the southern part of the range here, so we just have, you, all, all that you're missing in this map is triangularis and then a few pallida in the Sierra Nevada there as you go north. But we have uh, some hybrids, Santa Cruz, and in this contact zone, lots of uh, sampling in, in the San Diego County where I've spent my field work, uh, field seasons. And then out in Arizona, we have some, some hybrids as well. Uh, so, um, had a lot of help getting uh, uh, my feet off the ground with chromosome counts. So uh, a, few, a few master uh, chromosome counters there have, have helped me with that, um, get, getting that, getting um, this to work in Pentagramma, and uh, I've got 12 new counts to date. Uh, these are all uh, only California so far, but but uh, they they serve you as useful calibrations for the genome size data. And these are the results of the flow cytometry. So um, genome size uh, on the on the y-axis there, and then the different dots all um, are from one individual. Uh, and quite a lot of variation. And uh, I've grouped them according to taxa. And for the most part, I feel like the, the data are, are, are pretty, pretty clear, um, showing what their ploidy level is. But um, triangularis is a little bit messy. And you can see where I, I, uh, I color these as triploids uh, somewhat, well, arbitrarily, because I, I don't know whether these should be included as triploids. I don't have any chromosome count calibrations in that range there. So a little bit noisy, especially within triangularis, uh, and then in the hybrids a little bit as well. I, I don't know what that, what that guy's doing. Um, but tetraploids we only find in these individuals that we're calling Maxonii or triangularis or those that are known hybrids or they look like hybrids. So uh, no, allo, uh, no, sorry, no autopolyploidy in these glandula viscida, Pallida, Ritmanii, or Viscosa. So that's good to know. Um, mapping those individuals uh, uh, in, in Western North America there, we only found tetraploids in the north. So uh, they're, they're, you can't see them all, but um, in Washington state alone, there's 13 specimens. Those are all tetraploids, which is kind of cool. Up into BC, Northern Oregon. Uh, and then in the Sierra Nevadas, we only have diploids, triploids scattered along the west coast there. Then I'm going to zoom in on the south, uh, the southern part of the range. So whereas those tetraploids were along the coast to the north, uh, we, we see them in the islands, but then they go into these hotter, drier parts of California, with the exception of this coastal one. But these are all really pretty hot spots, like uh, western Sonoran Desert kind of, kind of uh, regions. So um, pretty low abundance uh, numerically in the contact zone for tetraploids, uh, and then we see tetraploids out in southern Nevada and then in uh, northern and, and eastern Arizona. 
Okay, moving into the spore size measurement results, um, I had a lot of help with this from uh, an undergrad at, at Berkeley. She's not measuring spores there, but that was the only picture. Yeah. I, <laughs> I snap over. Um, and uh, so th this is an integration of our uh, new measurements with some of Eric's uh, that I was able to get genome size estimates for. So. Uh, <sighs> It's kind of unsatisfying, to be honest. So uh, yes, it's a significant relationship, a correlation um, when I regress uh, spore diameter um, log transform genome size on the Y there. Um, good, right, that matches the theory. We know that with genome duplication, we should, we should see an increase in cell size, and spores should reflect that. Uh, but can we use this as a, as, a, as a tool, as a proxy for inferring genome size? Well, so we have these diploids here, these tetraploids up here. What if you happen to find a, a, a tetraploid with, with relatively small spores? Well, you'd be wrong. Or these um, down in this lower right area, these diploids with really large spores, that's, that's problematic. How problematic, um, we, we, we could figure out how problematic, I, I haven't done that, but um, not, not great. Uh, so what if we Can tease these hear? apart by taxa, yeah? Oh, so that was all taxa? That was all taxa, thanks, yeah. Thank so now um, breaking them out uh, uh, by those six species plus the, the, the hybrids, it gets a little messier. Um, Red Meanii, for instance, these green uh, uh, squares, right? We have this huge variation in genome size. They're all diploids, as far as we know. Um, of these, of these uh, correlations, only triangularis was significant. So let's look at that. Um, I need more data points here to really to really know what's going on, um, but it's a lot cleaner. So so maybe maybe within triangularis we can say that, that it's a useful proxy. Usually, uh, there's still exceptions, of course, right? This this one's problematic. This diploid with large spores, this tetraploid with smaller spores. I'd like to look at these individuals individuals more and, and see what other uh, um, funny stuffs going on maybe. Um, so. Take away from that, um, spore diameter and genome size are, are correlated, that's reassuring. Um, often maybe as well as a proxy for, for ploidy level within triangularis, but not across pentagram as a whole. Uh, and then coming back to my original questions um, about the distribution of polyploids. So the autotetraploids are widespread um, within, so that's just Maxonii and triangularis, autotetraploids. Um, they're widespread common and cryptic, meaning I, I can't tell them apart yet. Um, the autotriploids are scattered and cryptic, and then allopolyploids and, and diploid hybrids appear in that contact zone in the peninsular ranges, but then out in, in Arizona as well. So that's kind of cool. Um, we only have, to remind you, we only have uh, uh, one of the diploid progenitor genomes, right? Maxonia in, in, out here in Arizona. Um, can spore diameter be reliably, used, be reliably used as a proxy for ploidy level? No, um, but maybe within triangularis. I, I, I'd like to collect more data on that um, to address that question. Um, lots of future directions, um, sequence data. Um, I'd like to look at guard cells, um, uh, get a little bit fancier with my, my uh, uh, correlations, and um, look into the biochemistry. I'm just, just getting started on that, but, but there's hints that that's going to be interesting. And then apply this back to the geography and ecology. Um, lots of people to acknowledge. Um, Regional Forest Botanic Garden just outside of Berkeley has let me raid their collections a number of times. Uh, people collecting for me in the field um, and uh, a lot of advice, getting, getting help with uh, especially chromosome counts and, and some data, um, funding. Uh, and then the Rothfels Lab, thank you for, uh, for, for help, helping me along. And um, I'm going to be uh, moving to Green Bay. Uh, Ooh, me woo! and my family are going to be moving to Green Bay uh, next late summer. So that's where you can find me if, if you're looking for me. I'm not going to be in Berkeley anymore. Um, so uh, thank you all. Yes.